The war in the Middle East has renewed focus on the complex history of this region and the many efforts to reach a two-state peace deal, something that has never happened. There were many steps. One leader associated with liberal peace and military security is former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, seen here with Arafat and Clinton as they discussed potential compromises. Barak ran for office as the nominee of what some might roughly consider Israel's Democratic Party, Labor, by vowing security and new peace agreements. My uppermost concern and overall goal is to bolster Israel's security. But I know that the only way to ensure a secure future for Israel is through peace agreements with our neighbors. Barack won that race, that was over two decades ago, against a familiar face. He defeated the conservative candidate at the time, Bibi Netanyahu who would then, of course, regain power. And eventually, Barack served as his defense minister, leaving the largest ground operation against Hamas in Gaza at the time. That is the kind of coalition that is not unheard of in Israeli politics, which, as we've reported, just broadened to a unity government there right now. Well, tonight, we turn to Barack as a leader who's long commanded broad respect in Israel, a highly decorated soldier, including as a commander in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Also served in the Special Forces, where he oversaw Benjamin Netanyahu, his later political rival. Barack helped plan the 1976 operation to rescue passengers who were taken in a plane hijacked by terrorists. He also served as chief of military intelligence and was the IDF commander during Israel's first major pullback from Gaza in 1993. He has long sought peace while decrying terrorism. Any unilateral steps, acts or threats of terrorism, violence or other forms of aggression have no place in a process of peace. And tonight we turn to a leader with that military, diplomatic, political and peace process experience, a former Prime Minister of Israel, Ehud Barak. A, a tough time for all. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. When you look uh, first at the Hamas attack and how it has affected Israel and its citizens, uh, first and foremost, uh, how do you think Israel is handling it as a society? You know, the, the first 30 hours or so was a huge shock. It was by far the most severe uh, blow that Israel suffered anywhere since it was established. Uh, the price in, in the, the death toll is the equivalent of uh, probably 50,000 50, Americans. Uh, just think if 9-11, uh, for example, would cost you uh, 50,000 Americans, what was the response? So there was a shock. There was clearly a failure, major failure of our intelligence, of our operational preparation and, uh, to respond, and uh, all the echelon up to the, the political level um, kind of was responsible for major, uh, major shocking, uh, devastating event. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are a, a fighting uh, species. And uh, Israel has this tendency to unite once there is a clear threat. It took us uh, four or five days. We, first of all, mobilized over 300,000 reservists and deployed them both in the, in the south and the north to make sure that any surprise uh, cannot take place anymore. And we have enough forces to be ready to any developments on both uh, sides. We got a, an un predictable support from the United States, the moving, uh, moving uh, backing from President uh, Biden, mm -hmm. both in terms of the, the support, the munition, the, the spare parts, whatever we needed, and sending the aircraft carrier, probably two of them, to the eastern uh, Mediterranean, and even giving a speech that moved many Israel by its, its moral sentiment of mm. supporting the right side. And uh, beyond that, we established in the last 72 hours, uh, managed to create a, an emergency government, right. where uh, you will have 
had a cabinet, a war cabinet, still led by Netanyahu, who lost a lot of the trust of the public as well as the warriors. But basically, we added two senior generals who are now in the opposition, uh, Benny Gantz and Eisenkot. Both of them uh, served as the commanders of the and let me, allow and me, they, Allow me to jump in, sir. Because that's so important. You mentioned that. We showed the history. There's a lot of people observing from the outside. Uh, you have lived it from the inside. A two-part question on Netanyahu, who you know quite well. Uh, how do you rate his leadership of Israel most recently up until the attack? Uh, and how do you rate it since the attack? You know, I'm, I'm known to be one of the harshest critique of uh, Netanyahu for his behavior in the last few years. Yep. I was uh, on the other side of the barricades in the, in the fight against what he calls uh, judicial reform, and we call it judicial coup d'etat. But it's now about the security. So uh, basically, you know, with the cabinet having those two uh, senior generals, sober, responsible, balanced uh, uh, people, there is no real worry that something bizarre will come out of this uh, war cabinet, and uh, everyone sleeps better. But uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Tadiao is, is uh, responsible for ignoring for the last uh, 10 months or 8 months many repeated uh, warnings by the heads, by the minister, his minister of defense, the, the top general, the head of intelligence, the head of uh, the armed forces, once and again calling upon him to gather the government and discuss the implications of this rush toward this uh, judicial reform. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the risk for the country, which are created national security. So it reached two, two peaks, one uh, in March, when he tried to fire the minister of uh, of defense because he demanded to gather the cabinet because what he perceived as apparent and imminent risk to our national security. And you have to bear in mind, in Israel, the prime minister is not commander-in-chief. He just first, did, first among equals within a government which only collectively uh, reign over the, the armed forces. That was unexplainable, but it caused a pouring to the streets of probably a quarter of a million people within yeah. hours. Uh, which convinced him to block it. But later on in July, when they try within the same judicial reform to pass certain uh, clause in the law called the uh, limiting the unreasonable, uh, unreasonableness clause, something from the British tradition, something which was very damaging. And once again, the chief of staff, the head of intelligence, uh, this general, former general, they all warned him. Yeah. Please gather the cabinet before you uh, go to the bell or to vote for it. He rejected it. And the, the reason is clear. He understood that if the cabinet and the members of NATO will hear from the people responsible for our security, the head of intelligence, the commander of the armed forces, uh, that implication, they might not vote for the, uh, for, for the law that he wants to pass. So that's a grand negligence that uh, kind of unforgivable. Yeah. But it's not the issue right now. Uh, now, now we are united now to fight. We have a mission. We have to eradicate yeah. all the military capabilities of the Hamas. This is a mission, and it will be uh, completed probably with Netanyahu at the top. And yeah, with and let this, me I'll jump cabinet, in. I'll jump in only because I want to get you on more than one thing with the time we have. But yeah. I, it's for American and uh, international audiences. Very striking to hear you, given the history, uh, make that d d that discrimination, that distinction uh, between what you call those uh, uh, strongly held differences uh, and the unity that you also think is necessary, at least on that, as you called it, emergency basis. I want to play for you something from President Biden, um, who, of course, is, is, is going to be in Israel here. Um, he has, as you noted, pledged great support. Uh, the United States has been very engaged, uh, and, and yet he also said publicly that he thinks it would be a mistake to have a full reoccupation of Gaza. Take a listen. You do not agree with the Israeli total siege of the Gaza Strip. I'm confident that Israel is going to act under the measure of the, the rules of war. Would you support Israeli occupation of Gaza at this point? I think it'd be a big mistake. I think that uh, it would be a mistake to, uh, for Israel to 
occupy Gaza again. You've had the experience in the field, on the ground, uh, and also meeting uh, with the then uh, Palestinian leaders at the time trying to get to peace. Uh, in that sense, uh, you may be more credible than some of the, the many voices we've heard on this very complex matter. The question to you, um, is the president correct? Uh, is a reoccupation for, for that long duration completely off the table? And what should uh, an operation look like, as we hear that may be imminent for Israel to go into Gaza? <laughs> I think the president is correct, but misunderstood by the, the guy who interviewed him. Okay. The, the following is the question. We would all be very happy if we could erase the military capability of the Hamas just through operation from the air. That's impossible, technically. So we have to deploy boots on the ground, and in order to clear the Gaza Strip from any Hamas activity, we have to be there probably for... Uh, uh, some six weeks or probably for uh, a few months. And we have to take over the whole Gaza Strip, which might be perceived as occupation, but that's not what the, uh, the president meant. He meant that Israel, he believed, is not intended into taking Gaza Strip and then stay there for the next five and years or it. ten years. And let me press yeah, you the on that, and then I'll, I'll let you finish the means, part of my job. Yeah. So you're talking about that militarily to reach the military objective of dealing with the Hamas militants who have all these people, including they're holding Americans. You're saying you would estimate several months operationally, but no effort to politically maintain that territory in the long run. One of the we have several constraints on executing such an operation. One is the hostages. The second one is to whom we pass the torch once we took over and cleaned the the Gaza State. 